Hello and welcome back to my No Buy Year and the next installment of Style in the Era of Influence. Today's topic deals with evaluating where our attention is being directed. So today's video is perhaps the one that's going to focus the most on evaluating the influence in regards to style and fashion content in our <laughs> lives, especially our lives consuming online media. So hopefully up to this point, I've been able to keep this more or less out of the discussions of the other days, although it feels a little bit hard to avoid since, at least in my personal experience, so much of my influence purchases are as a result of material that I've seen online, content that I've watched. But today's discussion, I, I guess, is about how trends and style and aesthetics in general are kind of taken by the fashion communities on social media and valued and perpetuated and suggested <laughs> for people to partake in in a very specific way. And in some cases, it really feels like they're trying to get our attention in order to funnel that attention into a purchase with some benefit <laughs> to them. And then if we extend it further, and sometimes aesthetics also come with value judgments or associations that kind of go beyond the surface level of what the stuff <laughs> comes to represent in society. But before I forget, let me go through the outfit of the day. And this one, I'm sorry, there's only going to be one today because I showed a lot of my favorite outfits in yesterday's video, if all went according to plan. So I'm in my entirely blue look today, down to the blue Telfar mini handbag. This top is one of the Aritzia, the Babaton Sculpt Knit Tank, and I have on my cobalt blue. They're kind of swishy, swishy pants kind of wide leg at the bottom. And I was actually influenced to buy those when I watched Hannah Louise Poston's video about how she recreated a Tibby outfit. My pants are not Tibby, <laughs> they're Banana Republic. So basically a much cheaper version. And I did actually manage to thrift the identical Tibby sweater in a pale green, but that has since left my wardrobe as the color really didn't suit me. The pants though have survived on and I do really like wearing them and appreciate having them. So again, not an unsuccessful example of being influenced, rather one where I'm somewhat appreciative for the concepts that were shared in that video. And then finally, the shoes are, <laughs> once again, I'm a victim to the trends here in that when these Birkenstock potato shoes were all over social media, especially TikTok, I really, really wanted to jump in on that trend, but of course I did it in my way and at least, <laughs> thank goodness for that, because now it completes my cobalt blue kind of look. Those of you who've been here since the winter time know I have a cobalt blue sweater with a high turtleneck. It's kind of oversized and I actually like wearing that with these pants and these shoes as well for <laughs> maximum cobalt effect. So this is the summer iteration of the cobalt blue outfit. Okay, back to the matter of today's video. We are living in an attention economy. I am not the first or the only one to say this, but our attention has become an extremely valuable resource that can then be funneled into sources of income for many, many people, brands, corporations. It's not just an individual thing, far from it. In fact, one could argue that it's always the larger brands and corporations at the top that are kind of even using individuals, influencers, etc., as the pawns in their game to access more profits, wider communities for themselves. So many paths start at getting you to click on a piece of media, on a video, and end with your purchase of something else. And yes, even the social medias have added shops directly on their website, so you don't even have to leave in order for that click to translate into a purchase. I think this is one of the big flaws in any kind of content that's designed to teach or share ideas or inspire, because as soon as there are those links where you can buy something, then it's hard to determine the true motives and the true ideal outcome of any of that kind of content. And there's that question in the back of your mind, are they just teaching us this? Are they trying to help us in order to get our attention and then, you know, get our click and then get our purchase, get our financial support in a way. And increasingly during this no buy year, 
I'm learning that I need to value my own attention a lot higher than I have been in the past. I need to choose my clicks wisely. I need to evaluate the books that I choose to read a little more wisely. Like I shared in the last installment, I read the book on the three word method and found that it just wasn't written for me. And that's no fault of the author. It's just, I did not do the work to evaluate that before I paid for the book, I bought it, and then spent time reading it, which I don't view time reading as wasted necessarily, but I could have been reading perhaps something else that I would have gotten more value for my own personal life from. And then there's that question of being inspired versus being influenced. And I have not been very good historically about distinguishing between these two. And I found it so dangerous with clothing and fashion content because inspiration and influence are so often one in the same or they're presented as one in the same. So, so many times you'll see a video talking about fashion content with exact links to that product, the same product that you saw the creator wearing. And you too can purchase that exact same item and achieve the exact same look by extension. Some people do also link alternatives in various price points, slightly different styles. So in that way, they're also kind of guiding you to take inspiration instead of exact duplication, which, okay, that's nice. However, inspiration doesn't even have to be that closely parallel to the initial item as even that practice would suggest. For example, if we're talking about a pair of blue cobalt blue pants here, and I linked these exact blue pants in the description, and then I linked other wide leg cobalt blue pants at different price points and different materials, that's still dealing with a very specific item, relatively speaking. And okay, let's just say they're not cobalt blue to make it more relatable. Let's just say they're black, right? We're looking at black wide leg pants. Perhaps this version of that item, no matter what material or what price point, is not actually for you. It's not actually going to do something for your wardrobe and your style like it has for mine as the creator in this scenario. So to be inspired by the black wide leg pair of pants might mean it's a black skirt for you. It might mean it's a black pair of leggings for you. It might mean it's a totally different color of pants for you. The inspiration can take endless forms and if we're presented with options instead of open-ended questions or open-ended examples, our brains are less likely to do the creative work to realize what the inspiration translates to for us. And they're more likely to go with the easy to click solution down in the description box below. At least that's what happened to me. So that's how many times the inspiration and the influence were one and the same. Even in today's outfit example, the Birkenstocks, right? These are the exact model that I saw everywhere on TikTok. I got them in my color, okay, but did I need to get this model of shoe? Let's just say I wanted a slip-on flat shoe. There are many other options for slip-on flat shoes. Let's say I wanted a cobalt blue shoe. There are other options for that as well. But because I was being funneled to want the Birkenstock by repeated trend exposure on the social medias, I thought that I would get the Birkenstock in my version. So that is the inspiration that I would really classify more as influence. And again, that doesn't mean I regret having the specific pair of shoes or that it's a bad thing to sometimes get that kind of influence or inspiration, whatever it translates as for you. But my point today is just to be more aware of it. And <laughs> at least again, message to me from me, to be more aware of it and to evaluate more carefully. Is this inspiration really fulfilling the same need as it's being presented as filling in my life versus this creator's life or the trends on social media. It's kind of bringing in the more practical aspects of the function of the garment. And I have seen some style creators break down style into function or vibe. And this is the kind of style content that is my favorite. I think Alyssa Bell Tempo has done some of these dupe the vibes outfit breakdowns where she'll talk about how the shirt is giving this energy because of its structure or because of its flowiness or because of this aspect of it that is not really related to the specific garment. It's the more general aspects 
of the pieces of clothing that we can find in our closet in different forms. So this is the style content that I believe is the most helpful, which again, maybe I should have mentioned that specific example earlier in this week when I was talking about whether fashion influencers are helpful or harmful in finding our personal style. But this whole week of content is kind of taken as a package. So in a day and age when inspiration also comes with links to buy the exact outfit, I just think people like me need to be a little more careful in discerning whether or not we need any of those specific pieces. Not falling into the traps of thinking I'm being conscious by only choosing the best piece for me, even if it might not be the best piece for my wardrobe if I hadn't seen any of those pieces in the first place. Not falling into the trap of buying something similar but more me in order to buy the trend. Not even necessarily buying something that's in the vibe if it's not actually my vibe. And then oftentimes even the channels that do break down the vibes and teach you the valuable knowledge, we'll still have the occasional ad sponsorship and affiliate links. And once again, I don't condemn them for doing this, but I just urge us as the people consuming this media, myself as the person consuming this media, to improve my discerning skills, to know not to fall into the traps of wanting to support them through buying something that they've perhaps collaborated on wanting to buy a piece of their skills and their ability and their stylishness, <laughs> their style, by buying something that they've recommended. Or at least if I'm going to do so, really taking the time to truly evaluate whether it'll bring what I think it will to my life and my wardrobe. Whether or not I have anything else that serves the same purpose. Whether or not I am willing to go through the pain of decluttering it if it ends up to not work out. Whether or not I'm getting enough of the value from the content to be worth the possible ad exposure. And I think after this week, I'm gonna start working on speaking about technology and media and how I really feel like my attention has been hijacked, how I've allowed my attention to become hijacked by all of these easily accessible sources of dopamine and <laughs> illusions of learning and gaining wisdom by listening and consuming content online. But that's a topic for another day. There'll be one more video in this series of Style in the Era of Influence about personal style and self-discovery to wrap it all up in the next one. I'll see you there. <laughs> Bye for now.